Hi, I'm Marilyn Wolf. This is Computers as Components, Chapter 1, Object-Oriented Design. System modeling is a higher level way to look at software design in particular and system design in general. That is, um, before we start writing code, whether it be hardware description language, software, um, wiring things together, uh, we need to think about the structure and behavior of our system. And we need languages to help us describe these systems so that our thinking is concrete. Now, ideally, we like languages um, that we can use across several different levels of abstraction. That means that we don't have to switch languages all the time. Of course, um, specialized languages are also very useful, but having a language that we can use across several levels of abstraction allows us to um, verify that we've done things correctly as we've gone from level to level. We also want a language that we can pass around that is not just particular to our little group, but that we can um, pass around within our organization or even in between organizations, uh, let's say to our customers. Now, so you've probably used block diagrams. They're a good start, but they don't cover everything. So uh, one of the foundations of uh, system level thinking that came out of software is called object-oriented design. Uh, and this is a generalization of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming languages came first, and then people started to use these concepts not to write just executable code, but to model systems. So what's an object? An object is state, that is data, plus methods. Okay, So think of an object as a data structure plus the functions or procedures that work on the data in that data structure. Right? So you can have a bunch of objects of the same general form, um, but each of them has its own state. Uh, each string has its own value, for example. But you also need to operate on um, these data structures, this, these objects. Um, and so you use what are called methods, which are just procedures that are designed to work on uh, the state of that object. And so the methods are not just a convenience. They also provide an interface, an abstraction for the object. So now we can tell somebody, when you want to use this object, use these methods. You don't have to worry about what goes on inside. The methods will hide that from you. And if we want to change the details of the object, how it's organized, how it's built, we can do that without you having to change your code. That abstraction is very, very important for portability, for maintainability, and also for usability. So. Um, just as data structures have types, objects um, have classes. Okay? But a class includes both the data, the state values, and the methods or the functions. Okay? So we define a class and then we create objects or instantiate objects of that class. So how do we use this to do object-oriented design? Well, originally, object-oriented design was meant to make software objects that corresponded directly to real-world objects. So you've got a, a, an object for a printer. You've got an object for a keyboard. Sometimes that works very well. But sometimes it's hard to come up with classes that correspond directly to a physical thing. And that's OK. You still have a nice abstraction. You can still use the, the idea that a, an object has its own data, its own state, and it has methods that abstract away the details of that data. You can still use that in system design, even if, even if an object doesn't correspond directly to something in the real world. So, object-oriented design helps us um, organize and think about a design. An object is data plus functions, and a class is just a um, set of uh, a type definition for, for the objects.